Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney. Okay, just a quick little intro here before we get into today's video and today I'm talking about 10 patterns that you can make using Ponty Knit Fabric. We're going to talk about Ponty Knit Fabric and then 10 patterns, types of patterns that you can make using this wonderfully easy knit if you've never used jerseys or knits before. But before we get into that, I have a very exciting announcement that I want to make. Um, so maybe you've seen on social media, but I have another um, live meet and greet that I'm doing, um, again, at the University of Sewing down in Bloomington, Indiana. But that is going to be taking place on October 29th from 1 to 4 p.m. This is a Sunday, and um, we've got the whole store to ourselves. So it's a private event. Um, the store is closed. It is only open for us. So um, I'm going to be talking about simple gifts that you can make for your loved ones as we start getting into the holiday gift giving season and um, going through all sorts of those kind of things. But tickets are on sale today. Um, there is a limited number of spots for that. So if you are interested, you're going to want to grab them. I have the link for that down below, um, right in the description box. The description box is right in between, if you're watching this on a tablet or a phone, right in between the video and then you can see the comment box. In between there, you'll see where it says more or there'll be just a couple of words. You can click on that and that drops the description box down. But it's in between the video and like title and the where the comments start. So um, I've got, a, they'll send you over to the, um, page that, um, it's the checkout. You don't have to, don't worry about it. It won't like charge you right, right away. You can look at all the details, um, before you make your decision on whether or not you want to buy them. The tickets are $35 and, um, a three hour event. It's going to include again, going through, um, holiday gifts. I'm going to have samples and stuff there. We're going to talk about pairing fabrics with those. And then, um, also a Q and a at the end where you can ask me anything. Um, and then some shopping, the, uh, the whole store will be open just to us to do some shopping. And I'm happy to help with that, um, as well. And just kind of mill about and talk with one another. So if that is something that you're interested in, and if you can get to Bloomington, Indiana, I would love to meet you in person. I know this can be frustrating for those of you that don't live anywhere near Bloomington, Indiana, and Jenny and I are working on trying to figure out um, how we can take some of these um, meet and greet talks on the road. So stay tuned for that. All right, let's get into today's video. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we are going to be talking about all things Ponty Knit. Okay, so I did a video in August about 10 patterns that you can use with um, quilting cotton with the whole basis being me just giving you 10 ideas of different types of um, like what to look for in a pattern to see if it'll work with quilting cotton. Um, you know, 10 different types of patterns that you could use with specifics, but you could use, you know, use them as jumping off points to find other patterns that would work for that type of fabric. It went over really, really well. And I know that a lot of people struggle with pairing patterns and fabric together. And so I thought, you know, why not over the next year or so kind of highlight some popular fabrics and kind of do the same type of video with different types of fabrics as well, just to give you a good overview and help you to learn fabric a, a little bit more. I do have a learning fabric series over on the channel under playlists. Um, gosh, I don't know how many videos are in there or six maybe of uh, different, um, I talk about different fibers and all that kind of stuff and kind of go in depth on those type of fibers. But this is a little bit more specific to, you know, not just knits. This is like a Ponty knit, which is a popular substrate for a lot of people to use. And, um, you know, Ponty has changed a lot since um, its invention back in the, I think the 70s maybe. Um, it's gone, it was a double knit, you know, your polyester double knits. It has really come a long way since then. So I'll talk a little bit about the fabric and its qualities and some of the things to look for. Um, down below in the description box, per always, I have a lot of uh, links for you guys, not only the 10 patterns that I'm going to talk you through today, but um, also where I like to buy Ponty fabric, because like many fabrics, not all Ponty is created equal. So that's kind of the idea, and I'll just kind of sprinkle some of these videos, you know, one a month or so throughout, you know, until we I run out of fabric to talk about <laughs> Um, just to kind of be a helpful guide for you all as you are, you know, because online shopping is such a big thing, especially with fabric. Um, it's just where a lot of us have to get our fabric these days. Heaven, I mean, 
blessings to you if you have um, some good fabric stores near you. I am lucky that I've got some that aren't too far from me, which is fantastic, and I know that I'm very blessed. But um, I also know that that is not typical, that um, a lot of us have to, and I still have to buy fabric online, but a lot of us do have to go online in order to get our great garment fabrics. All right. Let's talk about Ponte fabric. What is Ponte? Ponte is a double knit. So this means that it is kind of two layers that are knitted together. So you don't have a um, pearl side and a rib side like you would with a jersey knit, which is just a single um, knit fabric, which if you look really, really close at a jersey knit, you can see just like if you were knitting and stockinette stitch, um, a scarf or a sweater, you could see the um, ribs on the right side and the pearls on the wrong side. Ponte knit is a double knit. And I know that there's ways like when you're actually knitting a sweater that you can do like double knit stitching and it, it looks a little bit different. But you don't have the um, ribs on one side and the pearls on the other, the, um, the knit stitches and the pearl stitches. So it, it does look a little bit different. This also makes the fabric a little bit more, uh, a little thicker and a little more stable, which is where the great properties of Ponte come into play. Number one, it makes it very easy to sew. Because it is double knit, it doesn't curl. So jersey knits will curl to the right side. It's just the nature of the way things are knitted, but a double knit does not because it is the two put together. So there's no um, knitting or rolling to one side. Um, that being said, it's also hard to tell between a right side and a wrong side. You just kind of have to pick a side and then maybe make note on it just in case there's some color differenti you know, differences between one side to the next. Um, but yeah, that can be a, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit um, uh, tricky. Um, another property of it, because it is thicker, Ponte tends to not be quite as stretchy as, say, a jersey knit that has spandex. Um, it's also, Ponte is also kind of like an interlock knit. Um, if you're used to using those, the old cotton interlock knits, um, is similar. But anyway, it makes a great, thicker, more stable knit fabric, which makes it very easy to cut and very easy to sew. So if you are new to knit fabrics, Ponte is a great place to start. Now, we do need to talk about, and we will, the patterns that are appropriate for Ponte because it is thicker. You're not gonna necessarily wanna make a t-shirt out of it um, or something that's gonna need a little bit of drape or that sort of thing. Um, it's just a little too bulky for that. So we're gonna get into those a little bit, but it is a great knit fabric to start off with if you've never um, sewn knits before. Okay, so let's talk about um, Ponte. A lot of times you're going to see uh, with polyester in it. Typically, you're going to have, it's going to be either like a polyester spandex or maybe it'll be a polyester viscose or rayon. Viscose and rayon are interchangeable, same thing. Um, polyester, uh, viscose, spandex, blend. Um, yeah, my preference is that I want as little polyester in it as possible. And a lot of times I like there to be no polyester in it. Now, my favorite combination for Ponte is a rayon or viscose nylon spandex blend. Nylon is a man-made fabric, but it gives a durability and sturdiness to the fabric, but it doesn't pill. Uh, polyester has a tendency to pill. So your Pontes that are polyester first, so have the highest percentage of polyester, and then maybe a viscose or nylon and spandex, the chances of those pilling are higher. Now, those tend to be a little bit more stable um, because viscose and rayon ha is heavier and has a little bit more drape. So if you're making, if you're wanting a very tailored looking knit blazer um, or, you know, something very structured or very structured pair of pants, you may want some polyester in there. It does make it a little bit more structured. My preference is that polyester just not be the first one. So I would like the viscose rayon to be a higher percentage than the polyester or nylon and then spandex. Typically it's listed in order, like um, ingredients on the back of a food box. So if it says polyester, viscose, um, spandex, polyester is the most in there. Next is viscose, finally spandex. My preference is to look for something that's rayon or viscose, nylon or polyester, and then the um, spandex there at the end. Um, I have had great luck sourcing some um, uh, 
oh my gosh, some Ponties for you. I've listed, let's see, five, I got my laptop here so I don't miss anything. Um, five different places. Minerva has a lot, ton of colors and I have used the Minerva Ponty for um, two of my um, Metro Blazers, which we'll talk about in a second. I have used, Mood has got a whole line of Ponties, and I think like 29 different colors. Minerva's similar. Um, I've not tried their Ponty yet, but I have some on order. So I've recently become affiliated with Mood. So I now have an affiliate link for Mood Fabrics, which means anytime someone buys something from that link, I get a small commission from Mood. It's no charge to you. Um, I'm affiliated with Minerva as well, but I have been affiliated with Minerva for quite some time. I always note in the description box what links are affiliates though. So you know, you know that anything purchased from those links are, I do get a small commission for those. But I'm excited, just became the affiliate with Mood, to try out some of their stuff. So I've got some stuff that I ordered with my own money that is coming, and I can't wait to try them out. But I have good, heard good things about the Mood Ponty, which is why it's one of the ones I grabbed. Um, Style Maker Fabrics has two different Ponties. They have a classic Ponty, and then an, um, is it Ariat? Ariata? something like that, Ponty. Um, I've used both of them and they are both lovely. And um, Serge Fabrics, I recently bought some, they have some, um, it's a viscose nylon spandex, but a twill. I made my most recent Parker Ponty's out of that fabric and it is lovely. They have a few different colors. They also have a viscose nylon um, spandex, just a whole, just plain, not twill, um, not, not with a twill pattern on it and a whole bunch of different colors as well. And then finally, Fabric Mart. So um, Fabric Mart can be a little bit hit or miss, and you do have to watch. They have a lot of polyester spandex ponties in their ponty category. But if you look, they do carry rayon nylon spandex. Um, and I bought a whole bunch from them, gosh, back in late winter, like February, March timeframe. And um, I've used almost all of it now, but it was, I was very pleased with the quality of that, but it was all the rayon nylon spandex stuff that I bought from them. So those are just some ideas of um, places online that I have been impressed with the quality. So if you want to try some out, um, you can definitely hit any of those links or just take a look at all of them and decide what you want to um, shop from. But it is a, again, a fabulous um, fabric and great for when you want something with a little bit more structure. So that being said, let's talk about 10 patterns that are fantastic for Ponty fabric. All right, again, I've got my list over here so that I don't miss anything. So we'll go over these a little bit by little bit. All right, so the first one, and again, just like with the quilting cotton video, just because I've picked, I've tried to pick 10, I have picked 10 different pattern companies and um, a pattern from their catalog that would be good for Ponty, but just because I picked that one doesn't mean there aren't others. For instance, I have picked, uh, my first pattern is the Love Notions Metro Blazer, but Love Notions also has some dresses that I've used with Ponty that would be great. So when I get to some of the dresses you see me highlight, then you'll kind of know the ones that'll be appropriate for that as well. You'll also notice when you're looking at the back of um, patterns, anything that calls for stable knits will work for Ponty. A lot of times they'll just actually call for, for Ponty, but stable knits and Ponty listed in the recommended fabrics are great keywords to know that that when you can use that fabric. All right, so pattern one, the Love Notions Metro Blazer. I have made this three separate times. It is a phenomenal pattern. Um, it's just a knit blazer and I wear them all the time. It's the perfect crossover between a knit blazer and a cardigan. Um, it's just Stitch has a knit blazer as well. That'd be great for, I've made it also in Ponty. It's a little bit more blazer-ish. This is a little, this is a much quicker make and, um, the Metro Blazer is, and again, it's like a perfect crossover between a blazer and a cardigan, and I wear mine all the time. Um, I have made a white one, a red one, and then one in um, kind of a plaid. It's like a rust and black plaid. It's kind of hard to see the plaid. It comes across almost being just a warm brown, <laughs> but um, all three of those uh, came from Minerva. The plaid one, the Two solid ones are the fabric that I've listed. The plaid one was one that was a polyester first. Um, I just kind of, I wanted the print is why I've ended up buying it. Um, it's a great fabric. It's just, if I were to wash it a ton, it would pill, I'm sure. I'm pretty sure it would, but it's a blazer. So you're not washing it a ton anyway, so you can get away with some of that stuff um, a little easier. All right, number two, the Itch to Stitch Tustin Dress. I made my Tustin out of Ponty um, that I actually got from Distashify. 
wonderful fabric and it works fantastic with the ponte. Because this is a more fitted dress, when you do a thicker fabric like the um, ponte, it skims and glides over lumps and bumps. It doesn't cling because it's a little bit thicker fabric, which makes ponte perfect for any closer fitting, um, not necessarily bodycon, although you could do a bodycon dress. You just want to make sure that your stretch percentage matches. That is the big thing with using knit fabrics at any point in time. You want to make sure that you have the horizontal stretch in the fabric, or it could be vertical and you just cut things out on the cross grain, but you want to make sure that your stretch going around the body matches what the recommendation is for the pattern so that you aren't, you know, it's not too tight on you. If you're making pants and there is a a vertical stretch um, or a horizontal stretch requirement and a vertical stretch requirement, you do want to pay attention to that as well. There's not always um, because vertical stretch, which is the stretch in the um, selvage, the on grain part of the fabric, um, that is taken into account when they're, when they draft pants. So sometimes pants may come up short in the rise on you when they didn't in another fabric, just because you don't have the vertical stretch um, that was the same as the other pants. So Keep that in mind. <laughs> but anyway, the Tustin dress is perfect with the Ponte. Um, it gets that really cool. Uh, I love that dress. It's such an interesting dress and I find it so flattering, uh, but it works really great in Ponte fabric. All right, next up, the Style Arc Parker Ponte pants. Crazy, you can use Ponte fabric for that. <laughs> so I've made these pants up quite a few times. I only have two pairs myself. I have a pair of black ones that I actually think I might give to my mom just because I just, I just don't reach for them because they're black. I know that pants aren't near your face and so they can essentially go with your clothes more. I just find black to be a very harsh color to wear with the other colors that I wear up by my face. I just prefer um, to stick with my color card. So um, I don't know if that means I need like a dark blue pair or if maybe I need a, probably a chocolate brown is probably going to be my next pair. I have the olive green now, um, but I've got, made some in the olive green 12, which are in my fall capsule wardrobe right now. But I've also made a pair for my sister and a pair for my mom. Um, my mom has a pair in a charcoal gray and my sister has a pair in black. So um, it's a really great fabric. And the Minerva um, Ponte that I chose is the Ponte I used for uh, my mom and sister's pairs. Um, my black pair were actually the refined Ponte from Joann's, which is really hard to find now, which is unfortunate because that was pretty good stuff. And um, and then the olive pair that I've made are that Serge fabric, the twill um, Ponte that I got from Serge. Anyway, it's a fantastic pull-on pant pattern. I love it. <laughs> it's got a cute little cuff at the bottom. It's a really good one. Okay, uh, Pattern Emporium Wanderlust Dress. I am wearing a Wanderlust Dress right now. This one's in a cotton jersey spandex, but I have made one in the Minerva Ponte. Um, it's the same fabric as my red Ponte Metro Blazer, but it works fantastic in a Ponte knit. So anything, um, again, stable knits. So a lot of times you can substitute Ponte for anything that calls for French terry. That will a lot of times fall in the same category or even sweatshirting fleece. Those are all stable Pontes uh, or stable knits. So if, again, as long as you've got your stretch percentage that's needed for the pattern, um, you're good to go. Ponte also works really great as cuffs and neckbands on sweatshirts. I use my scraps from my Ponte for that quite frequently. It's great. <laughs> Just a little heads up if you don't want to use um, ribbing. Um, anyway, the Wonderless dress, it, because it skims over the curves, um, the rayon nylon um, spandex blend is beautiful and um, hangs really, really well on the body. So I highly recommend Ponte for that pattern as well. Um, it doesn't cling as much. I get a little bit of clinging in my cotton spandex ones around like my bra line. I probably just need new bras again. But um I do get some clinging there around my back and my bra line, but I don't get that on the Ponte because it's a thicker fabric. Next, the Sinclair Patterns Harper Cardigan. This is actually a free pattern. I've made quite a few of these. Um, the one that you're seeing here is actually a cotton interlock, which is a very similar to a Ponte. It's just made with cotton and spandex instead of your typical rayon. Um, it's a double knit as well. Interlock is also a double, a double knit. It's not necessarily quite as thick as some Pontes, but um, it's a great dupe. You could easily make this cardigan pattern with a Ponte and get a really beautiful drape, especially if you're wanting something not sweaterish um, that has like a texture to it or like a fuzziness to it like a sweater knit would have. Um, it works great as just a, 
it makes it a little bit more of a crossover between a cardigan and a blazer a little bit, a little bit more polished, I think. So um, yes, a Ponte would be a great option for a Harper cardigan. So, and it's free pattern. It's such a good pattern. I highly re recommend it. Next up, I have chosen the Cashmere Rivermont dress. I have not made this up, but this is a prime example of when Ponte comes in well. This is a fitted dress. It's not like a skin tight bodycon, but it's more of a fitted tailored dress. So Ponte fabrics are perfect for this. It wants to hold that structure there at the hip line. You want it to be nice and fitted through the bodice without clinging. Um, now the top version of this pattern that has more of like a peplum kind of on it, I would recommend for that, you want something with a little bit more drape so that your peplum's not standing out from your body. So you would definitely want um, a Ponte that's got rayon as the biggest um, um, contain, the biggest um, ingredient, <laughs> the biggest fiber content that's there in that Ponte because that's going to give you the drape that you need for that little peplum that's there. Um, but any of the Pontes would work great for the dress version and holding its, its shape and its, um, yeah, keeping the style lines and so nothing's falling in on itself. Um, okay, next, I have also chosen a the Closet Core Patterns Sasha um, Trousers. This is actually a pattern meant for stretch wovens. This is where you can get creative and any patterns that call for stretch wovens, a lot of times you can get away with using a Ponte. Now, if it is a pattern calling for stretch wovens and it is a dress that includes a zipper, a lot of times you can emit that zipper because the Ponte has just a little bit, it's more stretched than a stretch woven. So you can get it on and off your head and over your shoulders and all that much easier. Um, so that's a fun little trick right there. But I have actually seen um, the Sasha trousers, I think call for 20% stretch and your stretch woven. But I think that you could try it just in the Ponte and make the size that the pattern calls for. But you could probably also size down one because of that stretch. Ponte, because it is so stable, is perfect for putting in zippers. You can put your fly zippers in. Um, in fact, I've made, um, actually, It's Just Stitch has a woven, um, a stretch woven pant pattern. I think it's the North Point that I have made out of Ponte. And they work great. So it is, a, if anything calls for a stretch woven, whether that be a pant or a dress, um, things that are just a little bit more fitted and need that extra stretch, a lot of times you can substitute a good stable Ponte for that and uh, make it work. And I, I have not made the Sasha trousers in a um, uh, Ponte, but I remember when the pattern first came out, I saw quite a few that popped up. So I know that it can be done and they all looked really, really great. I don't have any pictures to show you of my Sasha trousers. I need to make another pair of those um, just because I, it was so long ago and it was before I was on YouTube and all that kind of stuff. But it is a lovely pattern. It's a little more of a mid-rise, which is very flattering if you have a short torso like I do. <laughs> it's been out for a while. Um, I kind of forgot about it when I was doing this research here. Um, it kind of all came back to me. All right, next, Nomi Patterns ME2013. This is a wonderful little tailored set made meant for Ponte Fabrics. I have made um, the sleeveless top with the longer skirt for my daughter. She wore it to my cousin's wedding in uh, Italy and used a Ponte fabric for that. It was perfect. So again, Ponte is just a really great way to get a tailored look without um, sacrificing comfort. <laughs> So it's just, it makes fitting really easy because the having that added stretch just makes fitting a little bit easier and um, comfortable. But then because of the structure of the fabric, it does give you a very nice tailored look. This is a Brittany J. Jones pattern and it is a really good one. Like I said, I made it for my daughter. She loves the outfit. It's two pieces so you can easily mix and match. And there's a couple of different variations, a top with a sleeve and a shorter skirt that you can kind of play around with that pattern as well. But it worked great for Ponte and it's lined. The top of that top is, um, or that top is lined. That's how you finish off the neckline. It's a beautiful finish. It's, it's a really good pattern. Um, I've also chosen McCall's 8055 because this is a knit skirt pattern that comes with a pencil skirt or a line skirt with different lengths. So it's a good bang for your buck type of knit skirt pattern. Ponte works great for your more structured knit skirts. So um, a pencil skirt where you don't want it to be clinging to every lump and bump um, or like an A-line skirt where you want it to hold that A-line. Ponte is the perfect fabric to pick because it is structured enough that it will hold that shape. Now, when you get into your, you know, like a circle skirt or a swingy flared skirt, that sort of stuff, you can use um, a little bit thinner fabrics that'll give you um, the drape and stuff that you want. 
But for those skirt, knit skirt patterns that need a little bit more structure, like a pencil skirt or an A-line, it is perfect fabric to use for that. And um, again, I think that this McCall, I've not made this McCall's pattern, but I have made quite a few pencil and A-line knit skirts before, and Ponty is a great option for that. And then finally, one that you may not have thought of is activewear. So I've picked the Green Style Creations Courtside Dress. Um, and I have made my version in a Ponty, and it is perfect in the Ponty. Now, when you get, um, some polyester, when it comes to activewear sewing, is meant to wick. And that fabric is fantastic for athletic wear. Your typical ponty, though, isn't necessarily the wicking type of polyester. So you're going to want to choose um, definitely uh, the fibers that are going to be a little bit more breathable, like a rayon, the nylon spandex, where you want a lot of rayon in there, which my ponty did have, just for some breathability. Um and to make sure things aren't getting like too hot when you wear them, especially if you're doing active wear. But Ponty for this um, little dress is, it's my walking dress, is just perfect. I made the matching shorts that go underneath it. It's a wonderful pattern and it worked really, really great, great with Ponty. Um, and because Ponty is more stable, I put the built-in bra in there and it really helped with support. <laughs> I have power mesh in there as well for the support um, of the sports bra that's, in, that's uh, built into that dress but the Ponty worked really, really great, and it's a good fabric without too much stretch so that it keeps things contained, if you get my drift. <laughs> anyway, there you have it. Those are 10 patterns that you can make up with Ponty. Again, this is just to give you an idea. You can find patterns similar to this in other pattern catalogs, um, but yes, anytime you see um, stable knits, Ponty, um, French Terry, sweatshirt fleece. You can make sweatshirts out of Ponty fabric as well. Um, any of those type of things and even stretch wovens. Don't knock Ponty out when you come, when it comes to your stretch wovens. And a lot of times you can omit zippers when you use a Ponty instead of a stretch woven. So there you have it, folks. 10 patterns to make with Ponty. I hope you found this helpful and informative. Leave any questions you have down below and I'll see you next time. Bye.